How's it going everyone? Ghost of Tsushima has been one of the best received PlayStation games I think from the PlayStation audience. On Metacritic it's actually one of the lesser reviewed PlayStation titles. It's still at the low 80s but honestly I think it is among some of the best PlayStation games ever released and now it is coming to PC and Steam and in this video I want to break down the full system requirements so let's get right into it. If you are excited about the game, why spend $59.99 on it? I got you guys covered over at instantgaming.com, link in the description box below. You can get the game under $50, yes, $49.52 for the director's cut. Go check it out there, we will leave a link in the description box below. You're getting one of the best game releases of the year, even cheaper. Link down below, you'll get a Steam key, redeem it on Steam, boom, you're good to go come May 16th uh, when the game does officially release. With this video, I want to break down the entirety of the system requirements because what I've liked that PlayStation has done and what I think that every major game publisher and developer should be doing is not two tiers of system requirements. That has been the standard for so long. Ghost of Tsushima, on the other hand, has four tiers of system requirements, so we can really sink our teeth into all of the various requirements that are going to be available for the game. Whether you're looking to play this game on a lower-end PC, whether you're looking to play this game on the Steam Deck or the ROG Ally, because it does look like it'll run on those platforms as well. Let's break it all down and let's start off with the minimum requirements. That is for 720p at 30 frames per second. You are looking at an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 9 or an RX 5500 XT for the GPU. CPU is an Intel Core i3 7100 or an AMD Ryzen 3 1200. Minimum RAM requirement is 8 gigs of RAM. And then for storage, it does note SSD is recommended. At this point in time, guys, it is the year of 2024. I would not be playing games off a of mechanical drive, but that is your prerogative. Recommended 1080p at 60 frames per second. This is about the range I would say the majority of people are looking at. If you look at the Steam stats, it seems like most people are still rocking 1080p. So uh, for that, you are looking at NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 or an RX 5600 XT, i5 8600 or a Ryzen 5 3600. And yes, it will bump, be bumped up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now this is 1080p at 60 frames per second. They don't specify exactly what settings. I would imagine this is a mix of medium and high. That's generally what it is. I do not believe it's maxed out because I think you're going to need a little bit better than a 2060 for 1080p maxed out at 60 FPS, but we'll see on that. Now, when you're looking at the higher end specs, that's when things get spicy. And I know for the audience of people that are watching system requirement videos and my content, you might be rocking a higher resolution monitor or you might be aiming for the highest settings and still get 60 frames per second. First of all, we have the high 1440p at 60 FPS. This would be at the high preset, generally speaking, uh, PlayStation games have the high preset, then you go very high, and sometimes it might even go above that. But usually it's high, very high, and you get the idea. High, 1440p at 60 FPS, you're looking at an RTX 3070 or an AMD Radeon RX 6800. CPU, i5-11400, AMD Ryzen 5 5600, and then 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now, 1440p at 60 FPS at high settings, Remember that while this game is a PlayStation 4 title, it is going to look better on PC. 1440p is a relatively high resolution, but 3070 is fairly beefy, all things considered, for a PS4 game. But, you know, this did get an upgraded release on PS5. We're getting the director's cut ported, so on and so forth. I know for, you know, a significant portion of my audience, this is around the range that you aim for. 1440p at high settings uh, and uh, getting a good frame rate, I think, is the sweet spot. The issue that... We're gonna get to with ultra and 4k 4k pushing games at 4k and getting 60 frames per second is brutally difficult and when you're talking about buying high-end hardware the longevity that you're gonna have is games continue to evolve at 4k if you're trying to get the highest settings as well it, it is it's got a very very short shelf life 4k is still incredibly difficult to push. I don't care what they're talking about with the PlayStation 5. They talked about PS5 pushing 4K 60 FPS. How's that turned out for you? How's how's the PS5 Pro's 8K gonna turn out for you? It ain't gonna be a fun time. Guys, there are literal cross-gen games. PS4, PS5 games like Ghost of Tsushima, like God of War Ragnarok, like Horizon Forbidden West. Those games can't run at 4K 60 FPS because it is so demanding. They go 4K 30 FPS and obviously there are exceptions to the rule, but most 
most games cannot run at 4K and 60 FPS on current gen consoles. It's just very difficult to do, and uh, 1440p uh, creates a little bit of a sweet spot. Nevertheless, for those of you with FU money and you're looking to play the game at Ultra and 4K 60fps, you're looking at an RTX 4080 or a Radeon RX 7900 XT, Intel Core i5-11400, Ryzen 5 and then 16 gigabytes of RAM. When you're going higher resolution, higher settings, it is contingent on the GPU, as you guys see. And an RTX 4080 is uh, quite the behemoth to have. I mean, it's not, like, the craziest GPU. Like, obviously, some of... Uh, like, there are people out there with absolute baller PCs where, well, where they're going to scoff at a 4080, but for my audience, I think... You know, 4080, to me, is pretty top-of-the-line stuff. If you got a 4080 in your PC, you're probably doing fairly well in life, and uh, you got things figured out. And uh, most people, I don't think, are rocking a 4080 at this point. Most people I talk to seem to be still rocking their 3000 Series GP, which the 3000 Series was awesome, so... If you have a 3070 or a 3080, obviously, you're still going to do very well when it comes to uh, Ghost of Tsushima. And guys, as far as the game goes, I get it that when you talk about PlayStation games, it's got a war. It's Horizon even gets more buzz than Ghost of Tsushima on a console side of things. It's Spider-Man as well. Spider-Man, God of War, Horizon, that's like the trinity of a PlayStation exclusive. But let me tell you, Ghost of Tsushima, I would put it right in the mix. Hell, I might even rank Ghost of Tsushima above Spider-Man, maybe even above above Horizon. Ghost of Tsushima is just absolutely tremendous. One of the most compelling main characters in any PlayStation game, and dare I say any, and that's funny to me because one of the big uh, criticisms of this game was Jin, the main character of Ghost of Tsushima, which, which I just think is a crazy criticism. I think Jin's one of the most uh, compelling main characters a PlayStation game has ever had, especially how the narrative with him unfolds throughout the entirety of the game, and really, that's one of the core elements of the game, Jin's evolution throughout, but nonetheless, the game's gonna be great, we just need a good port, and guess what, Nexus has been knocking it out of the park, and I imagine they're gonna do it once again, and the latest PlayStation on PC title, Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut, does drop on May 16th, again, if you do want the game cheaper, instantgaming.com, $49.52, you'll get a Steam key ahead of release, you'll redeem it uh, right on there, and you'll be good to go, and uh, you'll get the game a little bit cheaper. Remember, this is the Director's Cut with the Iki Island expansion and all those bells and whistles, Ghost of Tsushima Legends is in there as well. Well, it'll be interesting to see if PSN account connection is necessary, like a little Helldivers too. And that's gonna do it for me. Again, a lot of you guys have probably already played Ghost of Tsushima, but if you have yet to, a lot of reason to check out this PC release that is shaping up quite nicely. If you do want to play it at 4K maxed out, it's gonna be quite the behemoth to run, but I'm sure it'll be a worthwhile visual experience. That's gonna do it for me. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.